All right, we've got our good friend Dan Gustin here, Friday Night Rivals. Normally the focus is on football or basketball this week, though. We're switching gears a little bit, actually hitting the net, if you will. We are talking volleyball. Thanks so much for coming in, Dan. Always great to see you, Appreciate Bill. it. Tell us about our big matchup going on volleyball-wise. Uh, it's going to be good. I, we're looking forward to this. Uh, Minogue against Carson. Minogue's had a great year. They're 23-3 and three right now. Is that best in the state? I don't it's know if it's, it, it's close. They have beaten Bishop Gorman, which okay. everybody kind of the Goliath. Know, judges themselves against Gorman. And they beat them. In a, it was in a tournament, so it was a 2-0. Not a, not a best three out of five, but they're uh, won 16 straight. They're back on a swing. They've won six in a row, wow. but so has Carson. Carson's won their last six in a row, so we think it could be some good action and a good matchup. Talk about this Carson team. They look sounds like they started out hot, hit a wall, and now they're hot again. That's exactly what happened. I don't know if there were any injuries or, or what happened, but J.C. Roberts and McKenzie, or excuse me, uh, Maddie Jurgensen have really been leading them. Jurgensen will give the front line of Minogue some problems because she's a middle blocker, and she will give uh, Caitlin Opio and some of their other hitters uh, some problems. Uh, Roberts is just an all-around player. She's only a junior, and she plays very, very stoutly. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen any of these, uh, these high school girls play volleyball, you are in for a treat. These are some great athletes. Aren't they fun to watch? You know, they really are. It's amazing the elevation they can get. And, and yeah. that's the thing I think people will see on our Friday Night Rivals show. Uh, Caitlin Opio is amazing. She has better than 220 kills. When you look at uh, Michaela Opio, she will get more than 600 assists. She's at 596 now. Jeez. Bill, she'll have uh, maybe 600. Uh, I'm sure she'll get the 600, maybe even 700. Yeah. Uh, Becca Smith leads the state in, in aces with 46, and you've got Julia Wetzel, who is an outside hitter. I mean, you look at the Minogue starting lineup. All seven of them we could be talking about, but they're yeah. a senior-laden lineup, and they are very, very good. Very good. Let's switch gears, talk about football here. Of course, Reed, winners in the North last year, took on that Goliath Gorman. Didn't fare too well against them. How are they looking so far this year? You know, they, they look really strong. They're back to where they were. The Gorman question, uh, they may meet them. If they get to the state final, they may meet them again. Look at Gorman. They have seven players that are juniors that are Division I recruits right now. Yeah. So, you know, they've just kind of reloaded. They have, didn't have to rebuild. But I will tell you, Ernie Howard has done such a great job with Matt Dennett, quarterback, who's such a smart guy. He's got Jordan Carter as running back. He's got three wide receivers. But the thing that I think stands out for them is their offense and defensive lines are so big and strong. Hmm. Who else, real quickly? Carson, uh, Damani. You like? Reno just lost to, uh, to Reed, but they gave him a well of a game. A well of a okay. game. All righty, now let's switch gears. Talk about a bit of a depressing issue. We're talking about that tough loss to UNLV for the Wolfpack. What are your thoughts on that? What is going wrong with the pack right now? Well, I don't know if so much is going wrong. I, the competition is leveling, and I, we were having a conversation. There was a meeting, and some people from the South were up here last Thursday, and Coach Rice, who was the basketball coach at Gorman, his brother's the coach at UNLV, yeah. and I were sitting talking. We were talking about Tony Sanchez, who left Gorman to go to UNLV, and we thought it'll be a close game, but we didn't think that UNLV had the, the, the second unit guys to stand up to Nevada in the second half. But I, they just played well. They did yeah. everything, and they executed. You know, the old, that's the old cliche, how are we going to execute? I think UNLV is definitely on the rise. It may not be, I hate to say this for people in northern Nevada, but it may not be the first year and the only year they have the cannon. Yeah. Because I, I think the recruiting that Sanchez is about um, is going to strengthen them. A lot of people raised eyebrows when they made took Sanchez uh, uh, at UNLV, but boy, he has done a great job, I think. I think he has, too. He's gotten, he's crystallized the community. Yeah. He, he's got the kids, obviously, believing they can play football. I dealt with him doing high school sports at Gorman. I think the world of the guy. He was organized, and whether he did all the work to get me the information I yeah. needed or had somebody else do it, it got done. And I think he's that kind of guy. All righty. We will, we will root for him as long as he's not playing the pack. There you go. Thank you so much for that, Dan. All righty. Let's toss it over to Sam. Hey, Sam. All right, guys. Thank you. Well, our next guest who you're going to meet in just a little bit is here to tell us about a nonprofit organization called The Notables that provides music therapy to the disabled. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 